What we're going to do is classify each molecule as either aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. Now, how do we do that? First, we have to check its cyclic structure. Good thing for us, all of these are cyclic structures. So that's out of the way. The second thing we have to check is that, is every atom sp2 hybridized? If we have an sp3 hybridized atom, then the molecule is automatically non-aromatic. If they're all sp2 hybridized, then we check with Huckel's rule how many pi electrons there are. If we have 4n plus 2 pi electrons, so any multiples of 2, 6, 10, something like that, we have an aromatic structure. If we have anywhere that's a multiple of 4n, so we have 4 pi electrons, 8 pi electrons, or 12, then it's going to be anti-aromatic. So that's all there is to it. So let's start off with this first one. On this first one, we have an sp3 hybridized carbon right there. So this is automatically non-aromatic. But this one over here, they're all sp2 hybridized, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4 pi electrons. Since this is a member of the 4n, this is going to be anti. On this one, this is all sp2 hybridized, and we only have 2 pi electrons. This follows the 4n plus 2 rule, so this will be aromatic. On this one, the oxygen has two lone pairs, and one of these lone pairs can become a double bond through a resonance structure. So this oxygen can become sp2 hybridized, and all these other atoms are sp2 hybridized. So we have one, two, three, four, and then only one of these lone pairs can become part of the p orbital. So we have five, six total pi electrons. So this is part of the 4n plus 2 rule, so this will be aromatic. With this nitrogen, we have a lone pair here, and even though this looks like it's sp3 hybridized, nitrogen does have a resonance form where it can form a double bond here, and this pi bond can become a lone pair. So nitrogen is sp2 hybridized, and this lone pair exists in the p orbital. And just as a fun fact, this lone pair has a 90 degree angle with all of these because it's, this nitrogen is not sp2 hybridized. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pi electrons, follows the 4n plus 2 rule, so it's aromatic. On this one, we clearly have sp3 hybridized carbons, so this is non-aromatic. On this one, we have a negative charge on nitrogen, but that doesn't make much of a difference because nitrogen still has two lone pairs, and one of these lone pairs can become a double bond through resonance. So we only, we only pick one of these lone pairs as part of our pi electron structure. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have 6 pi electrons total. Now if you're thinking about the second lone pair as part of it, well this second lone pair resides in the sp2 um, orbital, just like with this oxygen. One of these lone pairs resides in the sp2 orbital. So we only pick one of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. So this is aromatic. With this one, we have an nitrogen with a positive charge, and it might look like it's sp3, but remember there's a resonance structure where the double bond can move there, and we get a carbocation right there. So it is sp2 hybridized, and every other atom is so, but we only have four, one, two, three, four pi electrons, and this follows the 4n rule, so this is anti-aromatic. On this one, we have an sp3 carbon right there, so this is clearly non-aromatic. On this one, they're all sp2, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, so this is aromatic. On this one, we have all sp2, but we only have four pi electrons, so this is anti-aromatic. On this one, we have a boron, and boron is sp2 hybridized because it only has three bonds. However, it has no lone pairs, so lone pairs it has not. And so we only have one, two, three, four pi electrons in the cyclic structure where they're all sp2 hybridized, so this is anti-aromatic. Now what about this structure? Well, on this nitrogen, we have a lone pair. On this nitrogen, we have a lone pair. However, as you can see, the second lone pair that nitrogen has over here is used as a pi bond. And same thing with this one is also used as a pi bond. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six pi electrons total. So this is going to be aromatic. On this one, same thing. It's literally no different from the previous one. We still have the pi electrons of nitrogen being used as a double bond. The pi electrons on the other nitrogen being used as a double bond. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's still aromatic. On this one, we have a nitrogen and it has a lone pair. But wait, we have an sp3 carbon right there. So this is non aromatic. On this last one, we have a nitrogen with a positive charge. They're all sp2 atoms. And we have one, two. So they have this lone pair being used as the pi bond. So it is in the pi orbital. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, six electrons in the pi orbital system. So this is aromatic. On this one, we can see that we have an sp3 carbon right there. So this is non-aromatic. On this one, this oxygen can either be sp2 or sp3. 
When it's sp2, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons total when it is sp2, so that will be anti. If it is sp3, however, we will just be non-aromatic, so in either case, it's not aromatic. In this last one, we have oxygen. It still has its two lone pairs, and every single atom is sp2 hybridized. One of these lone pairs can be used to, become, to make oxygen as sp2, and it resides in the pi orbital. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six pi electrons total. So this is aromatic. And on this last one, we have these two nitrogens. This nitrogen has a lone pair. It does look like it's sp3, but remember we have a resonance structure. It can form a double bond here, and this, double, and this pi bond can become a, become, become a carbo anion on this carbon. So this, carbon, this nitrogen is sp2 hybridized, and we have this two electrons being used as a pi orbital system. So we have one, two, three, four, and then five, six. So these last two are coming from this nitrogen. The other lone pair in this nitrogen is in the sp2 hybrid orbital, so it's not going to be counted. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this will be aromatic. So those are just a bunch of examples of how we're going to classify each molecule as aromatic, non-aromatic, or anti.